This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast episode 312. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, video producer, podcaster, content creator with SorgatronMedia.com. Getting awesome with you guys uh, with this show. With me on the line, remotely, somewhere in the crazy, in the in, in the crazy cave, it is Crazy Kraus, Ron Kraus joining us also from Big Bank International Incorporated Intelligence. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Oh, and boy, is it raining out there, huh? <laughs> oh, I get this right. You're also a, uh, so people know, he's also a gadget dude. Uh, for said thing that I just said. Uh, 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 similar to what Chilla is, right? Yeah, similar. Uh, Chilla's one step higher along the food chain than I am. He's reaching for those goals. I'm just happy being an, an, an underling, you know. <laughs> so he's still young enough to reach for those ladders. And Chilla has—he's uh, off on. Uh, looks like he's on vacation. Uh, some amazing places. Can't wait. I, and I, I'm sure he brought the 360 with him. Uh, I believe to the beach. So he's going to have way better yes. 360 pictures and videos than I had this weekend. That's for sure. Whenever he comes back. So, but thank you for joining us and filling in for him. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Like I said, this is the awesome cast. You can subscribe to us on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Google Music, Google Play Music, however you want to say that. Uh, we're all in all those places as well as video versions on YouTube and Facebook. Please subscribe, like, follow anywhere you would like to to interact with us. And please comment on the shows wherever you do find it uh, uh, or just hit us up at AwesomeCast on the Twitter or we have a great awesome cast public group over on Facebook that you can join and become part of the conversation. And we, we also tweet out and, and share on there a lot of the stories throughout the week so you guys can comment on them and share stories that you guys think are interesting that we should be uh, maybe maybe considering for our weekly show here as well. Uh, you can also check out Interviews Awesome Chat, our uh, interview series. We have been on hiatus with that, but I actually just scheduled a few new things today. Uh, it'll probably be a few weeks before we have some new episodes of that, but I have some pretty interesting stuff lined up. I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Um, but if you and also you can check us out here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 7 p.m. Eastern time. A little bit earlier than that, we're setting up. We're going live as well. And you can check us on the Rivers Edge PGH.com. Thursdays, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. That's some great 24-hour live streaming stuff. River's Edge joined us at the PodCamp Meetup on Friday night at our friends Looking for Group. Uh, so shout-outs to them. Go check it out, riversedgepgh.com. And you can support the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our friends that do do that already at Thistle Sea Business Development. At this, we'll see on the Twitter up in Cranberry Township. Michael Fedor Show, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. They've been supporting the show for a good long time at the $5 level, the executive producer level, and you can too. Be our boss. Boss us around. They don't boss us around. Probably because we gave them cookies at Christmas and business cards. So they don't, they don't boss us around too much, but we do appreciate that they are putting in the show and, and, and are finding the value in, in, in it to contribute with the patreon thank you so much to them patreon.com slash awesome cast and you don't have to do that as long as you share the show with a techie friend uh we we appreciate if you do that as well and uh and we got some fun stuff coming up and some interesting spinoffs i'm hoping to grow the awesome cast nation here in the next several months kraus what we have a couple of things a couple of fun things here uh for our awesome thing of the week What's yours, good sir? Well, mine is the new app that was just released called Duo. Um, you know, as everyone knows that watches this show regularly, I'm a Microsoft guy recently, an Android guy. Um, today, they launched an application called Duo, which is a lot like FaceTime. 
you can see here, I've called Chilla and you so far. <laughs> and um, so for me, not being an, an Apple guy, I've never really had the experience of FaceTime. So this is kind of exciting to me because it's it's a FaceTime, I guess, alternative. But the great part about it is, is not only does it work on Google's platform, Android, it also does work on on Apple devices also. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, I guess. Well, I guess we'll have to see because, you know, it's just brand new. I've made two phone calls with it just to get it out there. But from what I've seen so far, it's kind of interesting. It was. So we had our call, and actually it looks like, you know, Grant, maybe the computers I have here in the studio. But actually it looked a little bit clearer on your connection than, than maybe even <laughs> Google Hangout is here. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But, yeah, it had, that is interesting. Uh, it, it was it was interesting because it did it – did, um, it, it does the, the, the video preview. As you call somebody, it is actually already broadcasting the video to the other person as it rings on their screen. So you can have a lot of fun with that, and I think you can also get into a lot of trouble with that. Uh, so that's been kind of interesting. But I think there's kind of an invite process, if I recall, as well. Like I had to yep. – well, actually, I had to call via your phone number. Like Yes, I, I did. you have to have the person's phone number, which is a good thing. Yeah. Or – yeah. That could what be a bad call thing. It? There's a word for what that's called. I'm looking at on on the website here on the on the announcement. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a verification as well. Like there was a verification. knock knock. That's what yes. it's called. So the video starts. It's called the knock knock in their application. So it basically lets you like you can do some silly stuff while the while the call is being placed, and that's what comes up on the screen. Right, and, and it, it kind of like it kind of quietly. No, no. This actually the other the other news kind of kind of got quietly uh, rolled out that we'll talk about that I'm not terribly happy with, uh, sort of related to this. But um, but no, it, it's it's uh, I I think it's nice if you do have a a cross platform family, you know, it, it, before mm-hmm. it's like mom just get a iPhone so we can FaceTime every once in a while or something, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and and I think in the longer, I mean, I think that is easier still, even. Uh, but like yeah. we were trying to play with, uh, we were trying to get, see if we could figure out, uh, getting Google Hangouts to work for my grandfather and it just became so cumbersome, right? Like the call doesn't mm-hmm. always go through and everything, but if this becomes kind of a real alternative, maybe, maybe this is something we could use in that, in that case. Uh, if it becomes that, that easy to use as they promise. And so far I don't see why it wouldn't because it's very direct. It's not that kludgy. I think I have the person connected on this, perhaps, uh, that you get when you're uh, dealing with Google Hangouts. Uh, so I really do appreciate that. And if only something was this easy that I could bring into like what I'm doing with you right now over the internet with Google Hangouts yes. to bring you into the show. Uh, and and well, perhaps there will be options that we'll look into very soon. Uh, but anyways... <clears throat> <laughs> foreshadowing for a story we're going to talk about here in a little bit here uh but no i i think i think it's good it's end-to-end encryption i think that's going to be important to some people with all the security talk these days but either way it's easy <laughs> you know yes it, it, it uses a uh, web rtc which is an open platform it um it's able to maintain a call when you switch from wi-fi to cellular that's important uh i mean how many things those things things hung because you you drove away on the wi-fi you know, and before it, it flops over to your, your LTE, right? Yeah. Well, as this platform evolves, too, it'll be interesting because, like you said, it was it seemed very dependent on that first connection to a phone number. So, like, my mother-in-law, when you mentioned, you know, reaching out to your mom, I automatically thought of her. My mother-in-law, well, she has an iPad. That is cellular connected, so it doesn't exactly have a phone number. You know, it's an iPad, it's not an iPhone. So I wonder, like, how would I get this to her? You know, deliver this to her because she doesn't have that texting avenue, I, I guess, on I, the iPad. I feel like it's one of those where she's going to have to plug it in. Have, have you loaded this on an iPad? Is it compatible or are they in this weird state with it right now? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't even tried yet. Like I said, literally the first use was just on my Android here. So, mm-hmm. Well, it, it, it'll be interesting and if any of you are out using it, um, I don't have too much reason to use it except for maybe... Um, 
so I think my brother's switched to Android, so maybe maybe looping him on, in on something like this. Uh, so so if I tell if I tell my mother that that he can that she can do this with my brother on his other phone, I think that will move that along. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, Suddenly, it'll become a little more important. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, th- I mean, I, I mean, you know, region on that side, like you know, you know, you know how the parent phone calls are, right? So, so oh, yeah. like the parent phone calls when they're broadcasting video immediately to you, it's <laughs> going to be a whole other thing, you know. Uh, so. It's. It, I'm sure it's interesting. <laughs> so, if any of you guys are trying out, please let us know your experiences here. Uh, especially over this next week or so, uh, as as it rolls out, I mean, it, it seems super stable so far from the little bit that we've tried it. So, um, yeah, it says when you sign up, the app checks your phone number and your SIM, then sends you a confirmation text. Um, yeah. So there's no accounts created, but it does, but it did bring down my my image. So I'm wondering how, because I think there is there is a little bit of handoff to like Google accounts if you have a number associated with it somehow. Um, mm-hmm. or it's with other Google things on my, anyways, that's interesting. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk, of course, this week, uh, uh the, 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 we'll, we'll mention the, uh, VR and 360 talk from PodCamp Pittsburgh later, but, uh, augmented reality was definitely something that came up and I, uh, man, the hacks are always what gets me, gets me excited, right? We talked about the VR bicycle guy with, uh, the gear VR last week. It also came up in our talk at PodCamp Pittsburgh, but, uh, th- this was fun. It's from Nintendo life. A, a website that I don't know why I don't subscribe to this uh, up, up at this point. Uh, but Augmented Reality NES Gaming finally gives us a reason to want Microsoft's HoloLens. There's a great video that goes along with this on YouTube. So yeah, they, they, there's basically this um, um, 3D emulator called N3S. And it, it, it looks like you can actually use this kind of in a 2D fashion. But they, they actually are able to modify a little bit. And they have kind of demos running while they're kind of walking around and shooting this video. Where it's it, 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 like Super Mario is kind of floating over the wall. And there's even like a, 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 a mirror there. So although I am kind of curious how they are shooting this too. Um, cause I can't, imagine, oh, yeah. okay. I can't imagine these guys are, you know, have all the high tech crazy equipment like um like uh uh like uh microsoft does but i don't know maybe there's something in the sdk which is is freely available as we talked about in previous episodes at three thousand dollars maybe there's something in the sdk that 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 has um um visual capture for something like this i'd have to look into that but uh but yeah they they're able to pull the sprites out and create them into uh 3d things there's some awkward things like when Mario goes through, goes past one of those bushes, it actually looks like it goes through the bush when you're looking at the side in a 3D angle. Um, they have to kind of go in and modify, okay, this, you know, based on complexity. Obviously, uh, Donkey Kong and Super Mario, that what they're showing, there's like a one color blank background. So they're able to say, okay, blue or black for the background is what is clear that you will see through. But otherwise, it's taking those 2D, it's making them kind of a 3D sprite kind of situation. And he's actually kind of looks like he's getting stuck in a ladder here. Looks really cool for Donkey Kong when the barrels are kind of going down. But uh, And they, they have some more samples in here, of course. A little bit of Tetris, a little bit of uh, Adventures of Link, which uh, actually they kind of left in the black background with the stars. And uh, and, and kind of uh, let you see how that looks a little bit. Um, really, really cool. They, they said there's a lot of tweaking based on kind of what they are oh they actually it looks like they actually turned the lights out maybe on this one yeah yeah maybe for for uh adventures a link with that uh intro there but uh no pretty cool check it out it's at nintendolife.com n3s is the emulator and they talk a little bit about the process and the problems with it uh but uh it, it could be an interesting way for us to uh kind of a reimagine or replay our uh, nes games in the future with this all these uh crazy headsets well, it's not even just the headsets, the phones too. Look at po- like Pokemon Go, another VR, like you know, augmented reality kind of thing. I think this is a space we're going to see lots of new st- stuff coming from it. It's very interesting. At the very least, how is there not already? And maybe there is. Then I'm just not aware of it. We're already watching Netflix and Hulu in our Gear VR headsets in a in a yeah. fake living room. Where's my Where's my arcade? Uh, the the pinball games that they were showing off, and I actually downloaded it afterwards because it's a free one. You get a free table with it. I forget which one it is. Um, the, you know, the, the, they're they're real licensed pinball tables 
that you're just, you know, standing over in virtual reality. It feels very realistic. Where's that arcade experience where I got the gamepad in my hand, maybe, or the joystick in my hand, and I'm walking around an arcade going up to the machines and playing them? You know, I mean, could you imagine having a controller with a couple flippers on it so you could do the the motion, you know, mm-hmm. on the sides for the pinball machine. That would be awesome. I, I, I think there might be some people that did that um, along with, because I feel like there, there was like some kind of pinball VR thing where they like created the control that went along with it. So that you had the feel of it a little bit more, but even just with a control pad, I thought it felt if like the weight, it felt like the weight was there to, to the, to the balls and the mechanics of a pinball machine. Uh, as you played it, as much as I can tell, I'm not a super, super pinball expert. Like, ask some of those people that looked really, um, really concerned during the competitions at Replay FX. Maybe you know, maybe they notice. But for me, as a casual pinball, uh, just, just you know, enthusiast, uh, uh, you know, like it, 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 it's comparable for me and, and a nice home experience versus Pinbot back in the day on the NES. You know, so um, and let's face it, you're not dropping quarters either. So. Right, right. In the long run. Or now, I guess it's dollars. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Uh, So, uh, but no, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, So, hey, we'll get back to a little bit of the VR talk, a little bit of the pod camp. Uh, We have some things, um, (laughs) some things maybe I'm not so happy about. Uh, But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our good friends at Slice on Broadway, um, down here, up here on Broadway, and along the tracks in Beachview. Cross has a phone call. Uh, <laughs> up here in Beachview, Rico and the guys, although Rico's hanging out at their uh, new location at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're right there. I saw they're installing a new sign uh, in, in the venue today. So that was pretty cool uh, from uh, Commonwealth Press on the Twitters. Uh, but uh, go check them out. Uh, they're also in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. Uh, some great stuff. They've been voted best pizza in Pittsburgh like several years at this point. Um, but there's always uh, go back to the original here in Beachview that has been supporting the show and the people that may, that brave the rain and make it into the studio, uh, or maybe we give them a little more notice. Sorry, Ron, uh, but uh, but it gives you a reason to get it. I know, I know, I know, Kraus, you came in specifically to get your slice on Broadway on, right? Yes, I have. I do that 100. percent it was sad today that I couldn't make it in for some pizza. We'll have to ship some off to you. Uh, so uh, thank you so much to them. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on Twitter, and look for Slice on Broadway on Facebook and that other social media, Instagram. That's the one. That's the ticket. All right. Uh, well, uh, I, was hoping, I was hoping maybe we have at least Katie on uh, to, to have her experiences from this weekend as well. But PodCamp Pittsburgh happened. PodCamp Pittsburgh 11 happened uh i did a little bit of write-up about why i thought it was important uh on the newsletter this past week but we had some fun i want to give some shout outs to the people and and kind of direct your attention to a couple of longer talks that we did have um um I, of course i want to give a shout out. i mentioned at the top of the show our friend uh, brian from R- the river's edge river's edge pgh on the twitter uh they were actually live streaming uh during our meet and greet friday night uh, also at our other friends of the show looking for groups location up there in Brookline. Really cool place. A lot of people got to see this place for the very first time. Um, we were kind of blown away that there's like, this is like a video game internet cafe. It's amazing. And it is. It's completely awesome. And everybody should definitely check it out. So it was cool to get some some uh, new people up there uh, uh, to scope that out. Um, also, I, I, you say we were uh, live streaming thanks to uh, hardware setups. Um, one our own here at Sorgatron Media, our, our traveling setup, as well as the uh, setups, thanks to, first of all, Stream Pittsburgh Cut Run Productions donated something uh, for the uh, third room. And up in the main room, we had the rig for uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh was uh, was hanging out. So uh, and, and, of course, uh, while we were preparing for the VR, uh, I, I had a little fun with that when uh, Frank was taking my picture from uh, Pit, Pod, Pittsburgh Podcast Network uh, with the uh, Gear VR on my head as I was switching video. Because don't try this at home, kids. Don't try this at home. Um, that might be my profile picture here pretty soon. Um, but also, That's yeah, awesome. like I said, we had we had a couple. Uh, I, I kind of did the since I was doing the video and, and trying to do some live switching and stuff. I we really only did um, two two panels that I was involved in. Uh, first of all, we did a state of podcasting talk. We had um, LC Escobar, 
of uh, she she podcasts and L- Lipson's the feed. You probably heard her voice on there before if you checked those out. Uh, as well as Dave from Drinking Partners, of course Doug from Should I Drink That, and Will from Panel Riot, all representing and had a great conversation about podcasting. And uh, I, I feel horrible because I think. Well, I, 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 obviously we had Katie on this past year, but I, I think like this is the first time we've had a had a girl on our panel for podcasting, and I'm real horrible about that. Now I think about that. In ten years, it's been all it's been a it's been a dude party, and I'm glad it like, but I'm glad like like that's opening up and that's changing. You know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, what's that? I agree. I, I was just agreeing with you. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but uh, but it was a really cool talk, and we, we it was some good conversations there. Um, also, we had a 360 and virtual reality talk. We had a uh, developer with us, a, a virtual reality developer, as well as Chris Whitlatch of the Pittsburgh Foundation. We've been uh, kind of collaborating, and he, he's also very involved in some augmented reality applications uh, outside of his foundation work. So a lot of ex- different experiences in there, and, of course, the stuff that I've been talking about and experimenting and, and talking with Chilla about with our uh, respective 360 cameras that we've had on hand. Uh, so we talked about kind of the future, and we had a nice lineup of uh, the hardware in front of us uh, as well. Um, and, and a couple people got to got to check uh, a few things out, and we downloaded the Suicide Squad game I didn't know was out uh, <laughs> so to play, and we were all playing around with it on lunch before we got in there. But it really was um, really cool and kind of, kind of boiled down a conversation about, hey, here are the tools that, are available and that are cheap and sometimes given away. Uh, we, Katie had her her BB-8 uh, Verizon giveaway cardboard, right? Uh, but then uh, Chris also brought, um, I think it was Above the Line, I think it's called. It, it, it's actually by Planned Parenthood, and it talks about like what, what women deal with when they have to cross that picket line. Um, you know, coming into an abortion club. Oh. and it's one of those where it was it was a nice box with it was branded with what the what the film was um, that they would give you. And then you download. It was a V Radio, VR Radio, I guess app, okay. and and you go watch the movie on there and and have the 360 experience and everything. But again, not required. You could watch it in like just just phone holding up 360 and, and kind of you know look around that way. Again, that kind of accessibility uh, that and, and and of course all the way up to the Gear VRs. And we talked a little bit about Oculus and Vive a little bit. So please go check that out. Actually, if you subscribe to us in most of the podcast feeds. I did. I did not do this. If you if you listen to us on Spreaker or iHeartRadio, uh, but if you're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anything like that, um, you should be able to look in your feed for the last couple days, and you will see um, both of these talks: State of Podcasting and 360 and VR. Listen to those. <laughs> we have. Wait, what are you holding up there? That's my podcast feed. I, I listened to the first one this morning, actually. Um, I would listen to the state of podcasting and I have the 360 virtual reality is in the queue. Awesome. Awesome. So. Yeah. Well, you listen to one of them. Do you have any thoughts on, on, on some of the stuff we talked about? No, I thought it was great. And I was shocked too. Cause you know, I know you guys have been involved with podcast pod camp and to hear that that was the first girl. And it was kind of funny cause she made kind of a big deal out of it. And I was like, wow, that is a big deal. Holy heck, what happened? You know, because right. like you said, K- Katie's been on the show for how long? And, you know, I'm surprised she's never been on one of your panels. Well, it, she hadn't there, but, but, um, and I think she's just within the last year become uh, a permanent kind of co-host on this show too. Okay. Uh, well, that makes sense then. And, and last year that panel was, uh, uh, like it was, a, it was the, we're still here or we're the grandfathers, the OG podcasters, right? Like ah. and it was, it was all of us that were podcasting way back at PodCamp one kind of rejoining for PodCamp 10. So there were no girl podcasters to be quite honest back then, <laughs> except for maybe that Disney kid that we hated on the wrestling mayhem show. We don't know what the gender was. We just knew there was a kid that talked about Disney, but anyways, um, but, uh, but, but we did have her as part of our, our panel at, um, evening with pod camp a few months ago and everything. So, and I think she's only officially taken over the podcast for Scarehouse even, within the past year. So, so okay. she has been, I, although she has been involved, I think somewhat with it, she wasn't the head of it. Like she has become. Uh, so, so I mean, there you go. 
<laughs> but yeah, but again, there you go. that's a trend that we hope that doesn't take another ten years for us to 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 deal with. But uh, that's awesome, and it was awesome too, because um, I've seen uh, Dave from Drinking Partners um, on stage <laughs> with other podcasts and stuff. But it was cool to have him in and in on, in on the conversation. And I love that he's just like the guy that's like, I show up and do and I do the thing, and Buzzy takes oh, care of it. You I know? Can I just tell you, I was laughing out loud in my cube today when he started saying, you know, I show up. <laughs> I stand here. I talk. I was like, "Oh, this is so great!" Because that's pretty much what I do when I come on your show. Right, right, right. And, and that's fine. <laughs> and that's absolutely fine. We had people from, and then we had we had Will who had been had basically done the same thing for how many years with the Wrestling Mayhem show, mm-hmm. and now he's going off and doing his thing. And then we've had Doug that's been the guy for a while. He had a part. He's been have he's had I think a couple partners on his show for a while, but I think he's been mostly the tech behind it uh, uh, for the ten years. So and still going with that. So I mean, I think that's yeah. I think. It's a, it was a, it was a pretty cool representation of a lot of different types of podcasts and podcasters, um, and, uh, and and like I said I love there, if if you if you want info on podcasting, there's so many. Dave Jackson from uh, School of Podcasting did a couple sessions. It was great to talk with him. There were there were great sessions. Although I realized I mislabeled one of them on the video, so we'll fix that. Uh, but uh, go check them out. They're on the Facebook and the YouTube. For PodCamp Pittsburgh, um, we have almost every session up there. Every sh- session has been captured. I have one session, which actually is a really cool session. It's about the history of blogging. Is what what you put on the internet now going to be around in hu- in a hundred years? How do we how do we make sure that happens, and will it matter if that happens? It, it's a really you can go back on the live stream and, and, and look for that uh, from the Sunday feed in the hub. But I, I can't wait to get that one up as well. There's a, there's a little bit I, I had to fix, and I didn't have time to fix it yesterday, and now I have to wait till I have time again to fix it. <laughs> so uh, that'll be coming up in the next couple of days. I, I seriously, I sat down yesterday and just just said I am not getting up until I have finished these videos and their rendering. And then I let them upload overnight, so they're all up there. Uh, that nice. except except one, 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 one. All right, let's get back into the stories. Pittsburgh.com If you want more stuff from that, we got some boot camps coming up and uh, and coffee this weekend. Um, coffee, this Sorgatron Media Coffee this weekend at Work Hard Pittsburgh on Sunday, one o'clock. Join us, Black Forge Coffee. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. We have a good good crew. I was at the last one, and I can attest to that. Yes, yes. So uh, if the Kraus seal of approval means anything, I give it the seal of approval. Speaking of which, I want since I've been talking forever, uh, Kraus, what, which of these stories have your seal of approval to talk about next? Um, let's talk about how about Windows holographic experiences coming to mainstream PCs next year. What? Now this is yes. The, This is an article that Paul Farad had on his site today that I found interesting. I guess today was the Intel Developer Forum in San Francisco, and Microsoft announced that they will be bringing the holographic experience to Windows 10 10 PCs next year. And they're talking about mainstream PCs, and it does mention things like the Intel NUC, which I don't know how familiar you are, but that's mm-hmm. their all-in-one kind of box. Uh, Paul Thorat built one a while back to do some things on. And they have a little video of basically someone walking into a room, throwing on a, 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 vi- a headset you know, that we've seen, not the, the, the AR, but an actual VR headset, and going throughout their day. you know, And they're saying this is going to come to the regular everyday windows machine you know that none of the actual specs have been announced yet or anything like that but it's an interesting idea and if they can actually make it happen wow so they're talking this is an experience that you would have a vive or a a, a hollow not a hollow lines but a um uh, the other one, Oculus, or or An maybe Oculus. yeah, exactly, or maybe or even, their own device. I don't know. Yeah, or, or they, and there's a lot of open source ones as well. But they're basically saying we're going to have an interface for these that that you can drop in in whatever VR format. It'll be, I'm sure, super open because that's what they always are, right? Because Windows. Oh, right, exactly. Which yeah. means which means there'll be some interesting problems. Man, what happens when your VR helmet blue screens? 
Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but the th- but the idea of it though is is like they showed the woman walking into a room, right? Putting on her headset, having her calendar up on the wall, and you know there was a, a whole VR room. Up, uh, I guess a room within a room, which is kind of bizarre in itself, but you know, and going through a day, looking at different things. Um, she clicked on a world map and dragged it out and then went into a, 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 a virtual world of Italy. And she continued to, kept going with a tour, but to bring that to the everyday PC is really where VR needs to get to. Cause right now, as you've talked about, and many people have talked about, that price point to, to get there right now is just so high. I don't ever see anybody in the mainstream actually doing it. Having something like this available might actually make that more possible. Interesting. Yeah. If it, I mean, it's say we've had an introduction with HoloLens to the idea that Microsoft is already thinking about this, but they roll yeah. it out. I, I, it could be really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Can we talk about the thing so that is? Stay tuned, 2017. That's right. Or so. Or so. Uh, so, can we talk about the uh, news that is vexing me that I alluded to in the first uh, uh, yes. awesome things? Because I want to separate this because it's not so awesome thing. Or it could be. I don't know. I was, I was very concerned about this when I read the article. I was like, what does that mean for Sorg? That was actually my first thought. All right. So, a little inside baseball here about how we do the podcast at Sorgatron Media. Krause is on Google Hangout. We bring them in on a PC that's sitting over here, or a Mac. I actually got a couple of them. Uh, and we take the visual the visual from the desktop, and we transport it as a virtual camera to this Wirecast software over here. It's something that, that Wirecast does, right? And it's all done over the network. Uh, so ideally, no, we, we can interchange how we do this with other applications, like perhaps Skype with group calling, uh, or, or, or something like that. And there's some other specifics with that and other concerns that we would have with that. We've used Skype in the past, and, and we just have to reconfigure a couple of things. Not such a big deal. Stuff I've been, been kind of lazy about fixing in the studio for a while since this kind of works. Now, we have shows that have started and have been, um, have been ongoing, more or less because of the ease of use of recording something to YouTube thanks to Google what was it? Google Plus Hangouts on Air, which was a great thing. When that started up, I said, man, why do I need my studio? I don't need my studio anymore. You can go do a podcast with this thing over here. Why not? In fact, in fact, um, um, Lipson, who did all you who members of Lipson did a lot of those podcasting things over over the weekend. Um, they do a weekly or monthly uh, support call, basically, with Crystal O'Connor. Uh, if you're a Libsyn user, you can get on with there and ask ask your podcasting podcasting questions directly to them. There are other tools, Blab IM. We play with a little bit. There's other things like that. Uh, somebody uh, actually, my friend just actually passed on an application that does a Google Hangouts on air type function. That I'm like, why do I need that? They probably want me to pay for it. I have Google Hangouts. You know why? You have a studio that you build and meticulously take care of every week in your basement that you've had for how many years, that you know every nook and cranny of how it works, because Google can't shut it off like they're going to to Google Hangouts on September 12th. We have four weeks. They At least, at least, they gave us four weeks notice. Very true. You have some time to work on a new, a the, new way. Google, this, the, Google is typically not so kind when it comes to things like this. Just oh, that's in, right. Last week, John was stretchy for some reason, remember? Right, right, right. And you are a little bit too because <laughs> well, you're, you're less stretchy, but you're boxed in because because um, they, they shut off the old version of uh, uh, Google Hangouts. This is the new version of Google Hangouts. So Google Hangouts is not going away. The Google Hangouts is an interface to YouTube is going away, and they're going to encourage you to use YouTube Live. Uh, okay. Okay, I get it. Get out of the way for progress. You may notice there may be a live streaming interface that's been in beta for the longest time. I don't use it. I like the way they use events uh, on there uh, with our functions, with what we do with PodCamp, with what we do for this show. Um, 
so so get out, get this this old thing out of the way uh, so they can do the new thing and they encourage you to do YouTube live. I'm curious. What is the replacement? Now, if you're just using Google Hangouts to say, I want to hit a button, use my webcam, and be streaming on the internet. It was a great function. You can mostly do that with YouTube Live, I think. I think I think there's just going to be... Actually, that interface does do, I think, a webcam interface that you can just hit a button and be live. So that replaces that. I, my guess is that function will come out of beta. My problem, my problem, and what screws up our other shows that exist solely because everybody can go in there and start a YouTube Live via Google Hangouts on air with multiple people. We've had executive producers of, of, of primetime cable shows on that show. We've had pro wrestling legends pop up on that show that has survived solely on Google Hangout. No, Google Plus Hangouts on air. I want to get the entire title. <laughs> So oh, that's awesome. now we have four weeks to figure out how our 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 attention getting shows are going to be produced in a um, in a web capacity that doesn't involve me coming down and turning everything up in my own studio that can't get shut off by Google. Um, we have to figure out how these guys are going to connect, how they're going to do this. I have uh, the shot has been fired in the Slack today. To let them know that things are going to change and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, the the call has been out as we're going to look for a new tool to do what you guys have been doing. There are plenty out there. We've ignored most of them or tested all, a, a couple of them and came back to Google Hangouts because it did the job better than anything else. So, if anybody has any suggestions, please let us know. We have a couple in mind that we will be trying out in the next several weeks. Um... But uh, but that's where we're at with that, and um, it's a really interesting point. Now, I, I actually ha was halfway into this one example. Uh, they're giving us four weeks' notice. Guess what didn't, and guess what a couple of shows were really pissed about? Justin TV did not give anybody notice when they shut down. They just became Twitch, but you couldn't move your podcast about wrestling over to Twitch. Although, I'm sure you're going to be able to sooner or later the way Twitch is going. But uh, it's been, you know, that kind of interesting thing. It always boils down to, you know, social media. If you're putting your stuff out there somewhere, um, ride that wave. If Facebook is getting you a lot of attention, ride that wave. But you also always need something to come back to. Whether you pay for an account with Libsyn to host your thing. Whether you, you have things backed up on another site. YouTube can shut you off any day. Hope you have them on your computer and you can put some of the videos that are important somewhere else if you have an audience. And that's why we have awesomecast.net where you can subscribe, where <laughs> you can donate, and so we can make sure all that stuff is lined up and you can be our boss and tell us and tell us to stop using Google Hangouts. Um, so that was my kind of ranty rant for this week. But yeah. Uh, feel so better? I feel I do. I feel a lot better now, actually. There um, you go. I found out about this about an hour and a half ago, and that's what's that's what's on my mind right now. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll probably clip that one out. Uh, I hear Skype's gotten better, so that's what I hear. That's any. That's what I hear. Still any consolation. Still no recording function that we would want to want to do with that, and and I and I have solutions for audio recording uh, in, in this mm -hmm. in this function in this this remote kind of function Zencaster I uh, I've used a couple of times and actually I recommend it to like three different people at PodCamp this past weekend. Um, so th there's options there, but what do we do for a video version of this kind of thing? You know, what do you do here? Um, so I mean that's that that's the kind of thing that we're we're kind of concerned with. So we'll see. It'll be an interesting four weeks as we uh, scramble to make uh let let some of these uh podcasts survive or we don't or we don't and they go away i don't know I, you know we i think some of them have had enough users that it's worth continuing and figuring out a solution uh but i have to make sure it's the right fit for the people doing it and not more work for me that's not you know that's just kind of keeping these things afloat so what do you think we should talk about our data <laughs> Okay, what about our data, Ron? This is an interesting idea, and I don't know if it's real or not. 
all because they don't have an Android version yet. Mm-hmm. But essentially, what our data is is it's a ad blocker. Their their tagline is the only ad blocker that pays you. So essentially what they're saying is you're going to go out and subscribe to their ad blocker. And the sooner you join, which it feels a lot like a pyramid scheme, <laughs> a little but bit. we'll just ignore that for the moment. Cause <laughs> when you join, you get in air quotes shares and these shares, then they're going to go talk to the uh, partnerships with advertisers And then they're going to get this money that is going to say, okay, we're going to block ads, but if you pay us, we won't block your ads. And then that money gets returned to the users based on how many shares you have. You earn shares by inviting other people, um, you know, it's signing up yourself. And essentially, the sooner you sign up, the more shares you have, the bigger potential for shares you have, because obviously you were in it, you know, six or eight weeks before anybody else was. So it's an interesting idea. I haven't actually been able to experience it yet, because like I said, they don't, the Android app isn't available yet. They are on iOS, but, um, it's definitely an interesting idea. The other thing I thought that was very cool about it is instead of you actually getting this so-called money, because obviously we don't know what that's going to be yet, you could also have it sign up and have it delivered to your favorite charity. So, for example, on the on the ad that they have, um, they're already set up with uh, Susan G. Komen, the breast cancer um, group. So I thought that was an interesting idea if you're into ad blockers i personally don't use them at all um because i like the internet and i and i know most of the sites that i visit that's how they make their money so i would prefer to have to deal with a few ads and still the websites be free i don't know about you but like the paywall now that's on the post gazette's website and stuff makes me crazy um so Take a look if you have a chance. So I also uh, listened to this. I believe um, the guy behind this was a guest on the new screensavers this past weekend. Yep. And it was also uh, talked about extensively, I think, on, on this week in tech. Uh, I signed up for it. I downloaded the app and promptly forgot the uh, last pass crazy password that I had used for it and couldn't figure out how to reset the password. I just did re- re- figure out how to do that, but now I have an email. I have to go uh, deal with that whole rigmarole to do it. So right. I am curious about this. I think it's very interesting. Now their now their argument for this, and I, I imagine you listened to one of those two interviews. Am I correct in that? Yeah, I listened to both of them. To both of them. So so I thought the pitch the pitch got me because the pitch was that advertisers because of the move to online and how much data they can get about you, basically the balance is off kilter off kilter. Yep. And that's why we have the problems with advertisements and data collection that we do. It's you're, you're, so funny. Cause as soon as he said that I was on this. Oh, oh no. The ad, the data collectors are on to him and blocking his internet. Apparently, Oh no, we lost him. They're out to get us. Um, but I'm really, really interested in what, what what that was. Hopefully, he comes back in a moment here. Um, we actually even had him plug in a, 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 a physical line to his computer to make sure everything wasn't so chunky. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But um, but yeah, no. Uh, so so. Oh 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 oh! oh you're back. back. You're back. Oh, good, good, good. Because I really want to know what you're about to say about. Yeah, he said X and okay. As soon as the words came out of his mouth, I was I was in. I was signing up because it made so much sense to me. The pitch got me completely, just just as you described. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. It was just a confirmation that we waited for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, check it out. It's our data. It was our data dot us. If you want to uh, check it out, they hope to have like Chrome versions and android versions in the in in the future to do the same thing they're starting on iphone of course so if you're on an iphone uh uh, get into that to you know uh see see how things are 
Uh, I think it's an interesting idea, and, and, and it continues that conversation that I know I've been listening to a lot on This Week in Tech, This Week in Google, about uh, ads and ad blockers and everything like that. So I don't want to get too far into it and, and bore you guys for that. So, All right. Um, we got a couple more stories we can probably fit in here. I, I thought this was... I. I I feel like you might know a little bit more about this than I have. I, I caught some glimpses of this. I threw a story in here that I found today. But Google is now working on a new operating system named Fuchsia. Yes. Because they need yet another operating system? Yeah. I, I kind of scratched my head about this one. Because I read a couple articles. I, I saw a couple things online and I heard a couple of people talking about it. Some people were thinking maybe it was going to be an IoT thing, but then they said, no, 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 it could be a, a PC-based OS or a phone-based. Like, I don't think anybody really knows where it's going yet. Although they did talk about how very lightweight it was mm -hmm. and, how, and how compartmentalized it is, or if that's a word, what I just said there. Um, but I, I find it interesting, but again, does Google need another operating system? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, they said there's suggestions about it maybe unifying. There's something about it. It's not based on Linux, which is both Android and Chrome OS. So if it's a replacement, that's a pretty interesting choice. Uh, so, Or this could just be uh, some kind of weird uh, uh, experiment. No, they found it on GitHub. There's bits of code in there. Uh, so it looks like you can kind of get into it and see what it is a little bit. But they haven't said, yeah, this is what this is for. Um, all, all it is is a little bit of all it is is a little bit of, of kind of picking apart reverse engineering and, and kind of uh, uh, guessing what it, it could be. Um, the only description we have of Fuchsia is what it says at the top of the GitHub kit page, according to TheVerge.com. Pink plus purple equal equal sign Fuchsia, a new operating system. That's it. I mean, it could be just an experiment. Who knows? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But kind of a curious move by Google, who's been curious all their lives. Yes, they have. <laughs> all right, Rod, tell me about... Um, I'll let you have this one. You are our Microsoft <laughs> fanboy. Okay, so all I have to say is Apple started it. And I'm not sure if you've seen the, the, the ad yet, but it's basically showing the iPad Pro with its keyboard and its pen, basically taking a bite out of work PCs and saying, look, I'm a PC now. And then, <laughs> and then Microsoft came back with a very good tongue-in-cheek kind of video showing the iPad Pro and the Surface 4 and kind of put it in its place a little bit. So they talk about, you know, how, you know, it's got an Intel i7 processor. It runs full office where the iPad Pro is running a slimmed down version of office. And which I thought was kind of interesting because they're almost bashing their own piece of software. But that's a whole side. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. They kind, of they kind of fixed the game on that one, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. So it was kind of like, hmm. You know, they talk about the trackpad, the external ports, all these things basically that the iPad Pro doesn't have. Although the Surface is not cheap by any stretch, but that's a whole other subject. So I just thought it was interesting. I, you know, I actually didn't even expect us to get to this article today. Um, <laughs> but it's just tongue-in-cheek. If you get a chance, go out and look at the two videos. Um, I believe I found the article on um, Windows Central. Uh, it's kind of cute. I enjoyed it. I got a laugh out of it. I thought you guys might also. Awesome. I, it's nothing new, though. Like These service commercials have been, have been taking shots at the iPad and back and forth. For a while, oh, of course, so, yeah. So it's it, it's the new it's the new Mac versus PC fight. To be honest, that that we've had for a long time, um, and it's, I think it's been kind and of eventually they're going to sing uh, Christmas carols in front of the Apple Store, and everything will be okay again. <laughs> you know, and, and, and every time one pops up on one side or the other, um, I mean, you you and I both know, yeah, but come on, you know, right. yeah, but right. come on. 
You know, well, yeah, 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 you have a keyboard, but come on, you're an iPod. Yeah, you're a Surface and can do all these things. Yeah, but you, this stuff, you know, you still have this limitation, right? I mean, we yes. we we know, and you're like like twice the price. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, it's not a hey, look at these things sitting on the table. All right, cool. That one's five hundred. That one's eight hundred, and here we go. Um, I mean, that's like plus. Don't even count the accessories that are obscene, right? Um, exactly. I mean, I mean that's. That's 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 they're they're working on that narrative. <sighs> Same as it ever was. It's nineteen ninety five all over was. again. It's nineteen eighty four all over again. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take their ball and go home, and Somebody, that's just how it is. Yeah, that's why it is. We're gonna see uh 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 oh damn. Sanche Nadella. I hear it every day on my podcast. Sanche Nadella. Sancha Mania is going to be uh, uh, one day over Tim Cook's shoulder on the big screen, or vice versa, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Or exactly or, because they both want their software on each other's systems. Let's well, not so much Apple, but well, Microsoft for sure. No, no, no. I, hey, them. hey, you know what? I well, I don't know about on Microsoft, but you know, in the long run, it's all cross pollination. I mean, we have Google Music on the Android device. We don't have a Windows phone to put it on these days. Uh, but you can bet if that if the Windows phone did take off, you you bet it would be there, right? Um, I agree. All viable platforms are being addressed by all three top competitors. Three. Because you can't ignore them. You can't. Or four top competitors. Four? Four. Okay. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Facebook's in the run. Well, do you have to say five? Amazon. Five. Is he? Oh, is, God, there's too many competitors. I'm running out of fingers. But everybody works on everything because we have the internet and we complete. There's a visual there for you guys with my hands. Uh, <laughs> That's my second applause for the night. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so I, I don't even do I even want to talk about this. Yes, I want to talk about this. Uh, we'll fit this last one in and we'll wrap up here. Amazon, according to The Verge and everybody else that yes. I heard this from you, you're, I don't know. I want to know which part you're happy about because it's Amazon because of what they're doing with video or because it's about food. I it could be any of the above. I know, right? What's this? I imagine though, this is a Pepsi. I drink it. You click the Pepsi. One shows up at your house. Come on! That's I want to awesome. point out. Okay, I want to point out. In PodCamp Pittsburgh one, Alex Lindsay was there, and he was showing QuickTime technology where Brad Pitt's walking through a scene and he's wearing a jacket. Oh yeah, I like how that jacket is. That that jacket is now clickable and you can buy it. Wow! In that's from PodCamp. That's what ten years ago. That's the PodCamp Pittsburgh eleven happened this past weekend. So eleven years ago, yeah, ten, eleven, however you do the math, right? Yes, yes, and then, wow. and, and 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 to be fair, this has already existed. If you watch Amazon, even if you watch on Google Play, um, this all exists on 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 either of those platforms because you can pull up as as I'm watching something on Google Play and I have Chromecast on my TV, I can pull up the display and it tells me what music is playing, what actors are in the scene, which leads to other movies that you can buy, which leads to the music I can buy from the scene. So this has already existed in some form, not like the clothing perhaps, but this is a step towards that that Alan Lindsay showed me 10 years ago and another room full of people, of course. But Amazon, in context now, is introducing one-click food purchases inside its own Prime Video, uh, uh, Prime Video shows. So they are creating content. I believe this is based in Japan. Yes. Um, so it's about Japanese cuisine. So this is higher-end food, right? Japanese cuisine that will let viewers buy, according to The Verge, featured products with a single click inside the app. So again, taking that a step forward, there's these cooking shows. You're like, that looks good. I click this, and it shows up, you know, via drone or whatever. It's Japan. I'm sure they're going to get it first. Um, so yeah, completely. It it it's just connecting all the dots of technology to to the future, right? We are living in the future. Yes. Amen. Yes, we are finally going to join Chilla in the future. Uh, so. Um, 
But no, this is this is the kind of thing <laughs> that, that you need to look out for. And I think this is the kind of thing that you may see pop up even more, especially even with Amazon's own shows. There's a lot of trendy stuff in Mozart in the Jungle. If they have some kind of deal in there, I, I, I could see that happening. You know, the job of costume designer could become a much bigger deal for for uh, TV shows and for movies because if now we can suddenly look at an actor and go, I like that outfit and I'm clicking to purchase it, that adds a whole nother revenue stream for that video, for that movie, for that TV show. You know, it makes that job that much more important. That's right. That's right, because you're now advertiser. You're now now all that thing. The person that 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 made a decision that a uh, Mountain Dew machine turned into a Transformer in the first Transformers movie, it's that kind of concept, right? Exactly, yes. Um, but as opposed to going to an advertiser that sells X, it goes to, I watched on my TV, I hit a button, and you also sell X. Yeah. So they could go to any... <laughs> Amazon could retroactively go to any movie that shows Pepsi in it and say, okay, well, oh man, I could go for some Pepsi. Boom. There you go. There you go. So maybe anybody at uh, some deal they have with, with Sony pictures and their back catalog that they carry. Oh yeah, we signed you up and we have this back catalog of Sony pictures. Oh, you, you've had a lot of Pepsi deals. Okay. Okay. Well, anytime it comes up, we, we've marked those um, because, because we have like mechanical turkin people to take care of that for us. Um, <laughs> I think I got my references right in that, right? Uh, but yeah. the, 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 I, I reached that from the back of my nerd brain. Um, that they take care of that for us. And now when you go watch, uh, I, I, actually, I think this is a Sony movie in the long run, uh, Short Circuit 2, uh, and there's maybe a Pepsi in it. I don't know if there is. It, I watched it a lot, but I can't remember what's in it. Uh, uh, that now applies. Reese's Pieces and E.T. now applies, you know, wow. like that kind of thing. And, and it becomes, geez, we talk about click-through rates on Facebook ads. What is the click-through rate on, an, on, on a purchasable item in a movie that you watch? I think that, that's the next step for that, for a bunch of people that have way more money than we do. So, <laughs> Yeah. Crazy Kraus. Ron Kraus. Crazy Kraus on the Twitters. Thank you for joining me. Good conversation. Thanks for having me. It's it was been, great. It's been fun hanging out with you tonight on the Awesome Cast. Yeah, I think this is my first time solo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank the thank the poor Wi-Fi in Etna, where Katie is now holed up, hiding from the rain in a haunted house. I don't know which is. <laughs> oh my goodness! I feel bad now. Yeah. Oh, I don't think anything affects her at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh! You just, you just, you just work around severed heads all day. Every okay, okay, you're good, you're good. That's a good point. Very good point. <laughs> Nothing if I, Oh, come on! I we walked into her living room and saw like intestines strewn about her dining room. Um, when it gets closer to Halloween, it gets really interesting because both of them work for haunted houses. Oh, that's great! So. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So, well, she goes everywhere with her zombies, in air quotes. <laughs> Zombie Wrangler. Yes, yeah. go check that out. They were giving her a de facto plug for uh, uh, at K Dutters on the Twitter and the Scarehouse social media, where there's uh, zombies on a porch in, in, in Castle Shannon a couple weeks ago, zombies in a kayak during a regatta. Who knows where zombies will show up next? Um, but. Hey, it's the most Pittsburgh job you could have is zombie wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's should. great. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, wrong, uh, anything other than your Twitter people should check out? Nope, I'm happy with just Crazy Kraus on Twitter. Go hit him up. Kraus on Facebook. Ask him any questions. Ask him uh, any questions about. Uh, what he's going to say he's a gadget guru like uh, like Chilla as well. So uh, if uh, uh, you have any Android questions out there, wheels, throw it his way. Uh, my microphone went weird. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, please check out awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. Subscribe to the other shows. Subscribe to all our friends' shows. Uh, subscribe to everybody else's podcast because podcasts are amazing. Um, share the show. Patreon.com slash awesomecast if you want to contribute to the show. 
you don't have to. That's cool. Join us live here at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. RiversEdgePGH.com at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. after Funny Money every Thursday. And uh, uh, other than that, you know, PodcampPittsburgh.com, the YouTube, the Facebook for Podcamp Pittsburgh has all the videos. We'll have all the videos. Also, a big shout out to everybody who's been talking about mini disc players with us on YouTube lately. That's been a pretty fantastic experience. We did a clip out of when we when we found where's it at this mini disc player in my drawer, and somebody listened to it. I still haven't listened to it yet, by the way. And there's somebody's voice on it, and it sounds like somebody we might know. Uh, and and there's like people talking about like what model it is, and and talking about what you could do with it and everything. Somebody told me they used to use these to capture audio for their for their like documentary recording, like much like you would like a, a, an H4N Zoom these days. Or for podcasting or something these days. Um, and this is an MDLP for those that were curious about that. So thank you, everybody. I think we got shared to a mini disc player Google Plus group. Oh, isn't that neat? <laughs> I, wait, wait, wait. What was that? Was that? Was that? <laughs> well, no, just it's amazing to me the way the internet works sometimes. Like, here you are, a little podcast in Pittsburgh, and then suddenly somebody drops it into, you know, Drops your little comment into a pod, into another group, and it goes wild. That's just amazing. The comments uh, I love today. that kind of stuff. The comments today have been amazing on it. I love it. I love it. They're just like just dropping into like tech on mini disc. I'm like, I I don't care the details, but I love that it's happening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I it's just, just neat. I love watching people geek out. Yes, I I love like we were looking for group and I'm, and they're getting set up for a land party and I'm like, there's stuff happening here that's a geek culture that I'm not familiar with, but I love watching it. You know what I mean? One day, Chilla and I will have to tell you about our days when we used to rent out conference centers Ooh. in hotels for land parties. Oh, it's been so long since I've done something like that. But uh, but anyways, oh. <laughs> Anyways, we should just oh, we need a land party. We need a circuit media land party to happen here someday, or, we can or make that a day at looking for group or something. I got a sixteen port switch in my basement. <laughs> we just go look for <laughs> we just go looking for group and let them handle it. So um, there you go. Awesomecast.net. Thank you so much. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hey, this is Matt Geica, your host of Geik's Got Game, 8 a.m. every Friday here on the River's Edge. I'll take a peek behind the sports media curtain, zoom out for the big picture, and as always, obsess over the details of the sports, teams, and players we love or love to hate. It's Geik's Got Game every Friday at 8 a.m. on the River's Edge.